So I'm Steve Stachnik. My name is Eric Hufnagel. My name is Kyle Watson. My name is Ricardo Arellano. I'm Jamie Reeves. My name is Michael Luby. My name is Linda Pesch. My name is Michael Benish. I'm Dave Cloakey. I am John Smith, um, President of Smith Specialized Heavy Hauling, and everything else around here. We provide uh, specialized heavy hauling to all the pipeline industries, um, excavators, some industrial companies like hauling cookie machines, um, big tanks, a lot of railroad equipment. In the tanker side of it, we uh, haul drilling mud. Um, when they're pulling pipe, we take all the excess oil or excess uh, um, mud out and take it to dumps. Overall, um, the challenges aren't as bad as they used to be. I think starting out when I was a young company, um, I was borrowed to the hilt. Um, but I've, you know, I've had multiple companies, so I kind of know how things work and what to do and what not to do. And geez, after uh, you know, 37, 30 years in the trucking busy, you hope you'd have it figured out, you know. Steve is my general manager. He oversees um, all the dispatching, the trucking, 99.5% um, of the problems. And he does pretty well at shielding a lot of things from me. I started working for Smith Specialized on March 29th, 2004, which was just a couple days after my third daughter was born. Well, Smith Specialized is 90% uh, of what we do is haul construction equipment, oversized loads, bulldozers, backhoes, things like that. And every once in a while we get a couple weird things we do. As some people see, it's uh, we've done train cars and we've done equipment for fuel treatment facilities, refineries, things like that. So, but mostly it's construction equipment. Um, Mount Carmel Sand and Gravel is a huge company we haul for. We haul for them almost every day. Mount Carmel Stabilization, just like its name, is a stabilization contractor. Uh, we provide an upgrade for bad subgrade soils before building on them, uh, i.e. roadbeds, uh, airport runways, building pads, uh, interstate highways, etc. Smith Specialized started hauling our equipment around. I, it's, it's probably been about 10, 12 years ago at least. Smith Specialized Hauling, uh, Heavy Hauling has helped our company continue to give quality service to our customers. Uh, John's guys and John himself are very professional and that equates to things being done right and, and things being done on time. I'm here at five o'clock in the morning. I try to get uh, as much paperwork as I can done before like 6.30, 7 o'clock, because then the phone usually goes gangbusters. By 7.30, people are coming through my door, it takes me away from the office, work. And, um, usually it depends on the phone call. If the phone rings, I'm, so there's some days this thing will ring as I hang it up, I'm answering another call. So a typical work day, it's hard to say there is really a typical work day, because they all, they all change. It's, it's, it's different every day, and that's one of the good things about this job, whether you're in the truck or in here, it's never the same experience. Well, a lot of the drivers are gone before these guys even get here. Some of these guys start at three o'clock in the morning. Um, I mean, my hat's off to all of them, because I know what it feels like. I was in those trenches with them. Typical day, uh, get up, you know, 5 7 o'clock. Usually, got to get at the job site. They usually want it picked up by 7 o'clock in the morning. So, you come in, get the truck warmed up, check all the lights and tires, and do your inspection. Roll out and move the machine and call Steve and ask him what's next. Hi. Do a little bit of everything, tanker, low boy. Um, usually a day consists of coming in in the morning, getting your paperwork. Uh, you'll drive to wherever the machine is, break the trailer down, load it up, chain it down, 
and safely deliver it to wherever it needs to go. The, the low boy is, is a trailer that you can disconnect and drive the equipment up on to move it from one, one job to another. It sits, it sits low to the ground, so you can actually drive the, the equipment up on it and not be too tall. It's, I would say John is more, you know, personable, you know, the, the owner, the owner of the company, you know, he'll get out there and work with you and, and stuff. And I, I think that makes it, you know, more personable is what I think is what makes it different. You know, you're not just, you're not just a number, a name and a number. Great people to work for, you know, they'll do anything for you and uh, they really appreciate the effort you put in. My biggest thing is, is, you know, treat your drivers right. You know, I've had, and it chokes me up a little bit, because we've had our moments. But, they're good. <laughs> Dave Clokey. I had hauled some equipment for him before, just, I, I never really met him. I think the last time I was in his yard prior to the train, um, we spoke briefly, I unloaded the machine and took off. But when he got his locomotive, and I went over there to haul it, I was the first one to haul it. Very, you know, Dave is quite a uh, intimidating guy, so to speak. Um, and yeah, he said, uh, don't F up my train. <laughs> so we we hooked onto it and we pulled it out of uh, we pulled it out of the shop and we brought it to the test track and when I got it through he was relieved and at, ever since then um, he's been a great guy to work with. Cloakey's Leviathan being the first steam locomotive built in the U.S. in 50 years is an engineering marvel in itself. To be able to make high horsepower out of two cylinders compared to the locomotives that are generally through my job site. Is pretty impressive. Well, to be honest with you, I think it went over my head. Seriously, I didn't really realize it until he actually brought some pictures into the office. And I actually walked into the shop and I saw the piece of equipment. I was just amazed, just amazed and in awe. I was watching a documentary on Lincoln and uh, I lost. I I seen the 440 on it and I liked the look of the engine so I thought I'd see if I could get one. And I looked around and there weren't any available so I found out the Park Service had prints and patterns so I made my own. It was all about Lincoln more than the, the railroad. I wasn't really into railroading before that. Well, he did so many things for the country that people don't realize. I mean, besides the slavery issue, he did the Transcontinental Railroad. He, 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 even, he even signed in Thanksgiving Day as a national holiday. Most people don't know that. He always saw had a way of getting his, his agenda done. He, he never, if he thought he was going to have a lot of opposition, he never hit it head on. He'd always, work his way in from the back door or side door or something. I, I like that part of it too because he, if he had an agenda, he usually got it done. Um, I don't know how he got it all done because he did a lot of other things. If you really study the man, he it's just amazing the, the things that he got done in his, in his short term. If he'd run another term, this country would probably be a lot different. When we started, the first parts he had for the Leviathan, basically the smokestack and the front side of wheels. 
I asked, what does parts for? He told me, I go build it a steam engine. I said, come on, you are mine? He laughed. Well, I, I don't know if I ever dedicated my life to it, but I spent a little time on it. It's, um, it's um, you know, after I watched a documentary in Lincoln, we built the, the engine, and then later on we built another engine for another group in uh, Pennsylvania that's tied to Lincoln also. It was a line that Lincoln rolled on to do the Gettysburg Address. With the Lincoln funeral car, that it took him about five years because he needed to start the castings as soon as possible. But the woodwork itself probably took a good two years where we pretty much worked around the clock on that. And we had a dozen, about a dozen volunteers that did help us. For the Lincoln car, what you build first, we built the structure, frame. When we got the frame together, carpenters start work coming in and working inside interior. The process to build the Leviathan. Basically, you gotta start working. First part, you gotta build it, that's the boiler. Because the boiler is a hardest part that takes a long time to do it. And then when you got the boiler done, basically you build the frame. When you got the wheels and frame together, you can set the boiler in position. 89, we started building the engine and we finished it in 99. It took us 10 years to build the first engine. Built the second engine in three years and a month. Well, it weighs about 70,000 pounds and it's, um, it holds about 2,000 gallons of water in the tender. The tender also holds 450 gallons of oil. Oh, I've known John for probably 20, 20, 20 years, at least 25 probably. He started hauling for me when I was in the construction. They helped move a lot of equipment around for me and, and early on they moved the engine before I got set up to do it and, and now they're moving the car. I think that train is special because it was built by two guys that are dedicated at what they do and put their heart and soul into it. And I think that makes that train special. Um, that locomotive and the tender and then of course the, the Lincoln funeral car he built also just a significant piece of history and just amazing to watch the stages of that take place and then to see the finished product. Dave and Gatto, they just, uh, they're pretty amazing at what they do. I just think it's amazing that one gentleman had this vision, had this dream, and it really came true. Like I say, I come every day to work. Every single day I come to here, seven o'clock, try to do my job. And I started getting involved, working on Leviathan, like make little parts, welding little parts. And eventually, we get that thing done. When you see the engine running, when we got events, and I saw the engine pull some cars, I really enjoy it. That's my favorite part, right? The whole engine. It's a really beautiful engine. I just like to see it run back and forth and how smooth it runs. It just works well. When you see it come back through here, you won't hear it clanging or banging. It just runs really nice. something that you've always wanted to do? Not at all. <laughs> Is that straight? I wanted to be a cattle rancher in uh, out west in Wyoming and I got into trucking literally by accident. Is this something that you've always wanted to do? No. <laughs> this is not something I always wanted to do. Is it something that you've always wanted to do? No, not really. I got into this business as far as uh, almost by mistake. So you have always, when you were a kid, you always wanted to big trucks and... Well, not necessarily. Have you always been into trains? No. No. 